Okay. Well, let's go ahead to, to the main event. We're going to go ahead and get started with our ANA six flight. I'm going to go ahead and ask our, our ANA uh, operator to submit the preliminary flight plan for our flight here this morning. Um, and you see they, they did submit that. The preliminary flight plan is uh, is envisioned to be sort of the first, first FFI uh, negotiation, trajectory negotiation here. Um, that, that we would have for for any of our EAUs. Uh, and and what we see here uh, is you see on the graphical display that, that nice route of flight there. Um, when we see messages coming back from both JCAB as well as the FAA, and uh, any time an FFI message is submitted from an, from an EAU, we're actually gonna see two messages coming back from any of the downstream EASPs. And so in this case, of course, for this flight, uh, the two EASPs are JCAB and the FAA. That first message that our operator has highlighted from JCAB is something called a submission response. And you see our operator actually brought up that detailed information pop out there up on top of our graphical display. That just gives you a little bit more information about each of these messages. The submission response is really just a a system to system acknowledgement that the message has been received. So it's it's uh, in no way um, meant to provide any of the good information in it, like this next message, which is the status. In this case, because it was a preliminary flight plan, uh, the the status is a planning status that comes back. And what we're really looking for is in that the bottom of that pop out window there in the detailed information where it says status concur. That's that's what we're looking for um, as an EAU here. We're looking for a concur from all of the downstream EASPs. And as, a, as our operator clicks down there, looks like we did get a concur also from, from the FAA. And that is an indication to this airspace user here that you know all the information that they provided in this preliminary flight plan is, is acceptable to both of these ASPs, these EASPs. Um, and it's been, you know, it's it's been uh, this preliminary flight plan has officially been submitted, and, and each of these EASPs uh, is is aware of it. Um, they're going to do right now um, because we are uh, pre-departure here. In this case, they're actually going to lock this in by submitting a, a, a flight plan, an EFPL, an enhanced flight plan. Again, another FFI. Um, tool here so looks like we did get a response back both from um, if I'm following along in our table there both from the FAA as as well as uh, JCAB and it looks like the the response is ex or the status here is acceptable from from both of those um, from both of those EAMPs you know before we actually depart this I think it's I think it's time to go ahead and look at our first operational focus area which is the uh, the transition from planning to execution. So a while back there, we're gonna switch over to a, a different flight here, ROU 1950. Again, that was from Panama here. And so, um, you know, being in, in EAU, participating in FFI negotiations here, I think that uh, our aerospace user might go ahead and try a, a trial plan. You know, this is an opportunity for them to, uh, without making any official change yet, be able to see how they can comply with this reroute advisory, uh, you know, and, and still have, um, still be able to try a, you know, a route that works, that works well for them here. We're getting a non-concur back from the FAA. And uh, as our operator hovers over there, it's telling us there's a negotiation horizon. So things that happen beyond that negotiation horizon will be in the strategic. Things that happen before it will be in the tactical world. So I think our operator just Made the made the decision here to go ahead with a revision request, which means that they now actually have locked in this this orange route that we see here. Um, it looks like they got a, a status back from the FAA as acceptable. And again, as a reminder, um, we wouldn't expect to see any any update coming back from from Nav Canada here because uh, because it's 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 the downstream EASP, and so. Uh, we're going to use that that tool that we have in FFIS called an agreed trajectory uh, again to communicate this change to Nav Canada. And uh, to take a look at that, we, we're going to bring up a, another new system for you here. This is uh, provided by our our Nav Canada partners. This is their uh, their simulation display that's uh, showing all the messages 
that are going back and forth here, all the FFIS messages. You see our, our operator actually highlighted there, there there's an agreed uh, trajectory. Um, the source of that is UFPF. Again, that's that system on the U.S. side that's really, you know, really the, 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 um, the front interface there for all of our FFIS uh, message exchange here today it gives you an idea of what is FFIs it gives you an idea of what you should think about uh, when you start working and looking at FFIs for your organization or for your regions 